come on. We will win. Because we will hit all game. We are motivated. We are dedicated. Come on now. Come on now. We will win. Because we are the best on the field. Then we hit the field like all day like all night like on the blue light. On fence like this fence like this ground like house call like in a sound like in a sound like in a sound like Welcome everybody to the Short Sports Show. I am your host Daniel Short. Today is Happy Christmas Day. It is December 25th, 2015. Thank you everybody for uh, joining me in this show. I know it's uh, crazy. Everybody doing Christmas stuff, opening up presents and all the good stuff. I hope everybody's having a great Christmas, whether you're listening listening to this on Christmas Day or a few days afterwards. It's all good by me, but I wanted to get the show in. Uh, So we can talk about some news that has happened since uh, last show on Monday. And a lot of great, um, well, I don't know, great stuff. Depends who you're a fan of. and But overall, just a great week of football. And this weekend is is going to be even better. So we're going to get into that. Uh, But first, the intro you just heard is from Triune featuring EQ. And it is called Forever. You can buy it on iTunes. Uh, You can buy it anywhere. Music is sold. It is an amazing uh, song. Also, the album Raise the Fail, Born to Succeed. Get that anywhere as well. Great album. Gets you pumped up. Gets you ready. And I absolutely love it. So let us go on. We're going to try to do this very quickly. So that way we can just make this, you know, a really, well, you know, short sports show. Ta-da. No, that was bad. Okay. Uh, former Texas A&M quarterback Kyler Murray found a spot, apparently. He has agreed to transfer to Oklahoma. He will join the Sooners on a scholarship this spring. The university announced Thursday. Murray, again, was a five-star recruit and the number 13 overall prospect in the recruiting class of 2015 after quarterbacking Allen High School to three straight championship. Um, Bob Stoops said in a statement, quote, we are very happy to welcome Kyler to our program. We look forward to working with him. You know, of course he would. Of course he would. Uh, Murray played in eight games and started three times as a true freshman at Texas A&M. He, uh, this season, he passed uh, he passed for over a thousand total yards on offense. Excuse me, uh, completed fifty nine and a half percent of his passes and threw five touchdowns to seven interceptions. Murray, however, announced he was leaving Texas A&M last week, making him the second former number one quarterback to leave College Station in December. Uh, as we know, several days before, Kyle Allen had revealed he would be transferring from Texas A&M, thinking, making all of us think that, okay, it's all Kyler Murray's job now. Mm, not so much. <laughs> They're both gone. Uh, Kyle Allen still hasn't said where he will go, but it's going to be interesting to see uh, where he ends up now that Kyler Murray is going to Oklahoma. At the moment, Oklahoma starting quarterback Baker Mayfield only has one season of eligibility remaining, in t- uh, which is 2016. And that means Murray, who has is being forced to sit out anyways for next season, could step right in in 2017, still have, what, three years of eligibility, and, and get ready to play. It could be exciting. It's going to be interesting why he chose Oklahoma over other schools. Um, I mean, yes, you think about 
well, look what Baker Mayfield did. He transferred from Tech, and bam, he has you know a great year, leads Oklahoma to the playoffs. But then, you know, Lincoln Riley, he was up for some head coaching jobs this year, and I guarantee you they have the same success that they had uh, this year for next year, or even better. He's going to be looking at other jobs too, and he might leave. You know, I, I think if South Carolina was actually smart and they offered him the job, I think he might have taken the South Carolina job. Obviously, I don't have any intel on that, but just saying. So I, I don't see him staying for that much longer. What happens if 2017 comes and there's no Lincoln Riley? Is Kyler Murray, what is he going to do? Is he just going to play baseball? And that's another thing. He cannot play baseball at Oklahoma. So he's going to arrive in the spring in January. And just because, you know, he's playing football as well, he cannot play baseball at all this year. So that takes a shot for his Major League Baseball as well so we'll just have to see but Kyler Murray ends up at Oklahoma and it's going to be crazy apparently Oklahoma already has big commitments from 2016 and the 2017 class at at quarterback already so see if they flip or not um but yeah it's going to be very interesting with Oklahoma and I I hope I don't know I don't know how I feel about Kyler Murray just yet you know I don't think I'm too scared of him uh coming in there and playing so I don't know. Uh, Some bad news, though. TCU wide receiver Josh Doxson has been ruled out to return for the Valero Alamo Bowl after missing the past two games of the regular season uh, with a wrist injury. According to local media reports, Coach Gary Patterson said said after practice on Tuesday that the All-American senior would not recover in time to play for the number 11 Horned Frogs in the January 2nd game against number 15 Oregon. Uh, Doxson injured his wrist back in November uh, 7th at Oklahoma State. He tried to play through it the next game against Kansas, but only had one catch and couldn't really do anything uh, with that. Doxson, a former walk-on, was one of the top receivers in college football this season with 79 catches, 1,300 yards, and 14 touchdowns in just basically 10 games. (laughs) Uh, Very impressive and just another blow, but... um, you know, he did get an invite to play at the Senior Bowl. Whether he actually accepts that to go play, because um, that happens January 30th, and if his wrist is going to be ready in time, I honestly think he's done enough the past two years uh, game film that he doesn't have to play in the Senior Bowl and really just be 100% for TCU Pro Day and the NFL Combine because he will get an invite to that Um so why not be a fully healthy for that and get ready to go? Because I think he's done enough. I, I think everybody believes that he's done enough to uh, game film and not really have to play the Senior Bowl. Uh, Missouri has reinstated Matty Mock, the quarterback who was suspended twice in 2015. New coach uh, Barry Odom confirmed the move Wednesday before the annual Bragging Rights basketball game between Illinois and Missouri, saying, quote, I believe in guys having opportunity and chances. Uh, Odom said he was convinced after meeting with Mock that he was excited about rejoining the program and wanted to make it official before the players left for the holiday break. Now, Mock only has one year of eligibility remaining and could contend with quarterback Drew Locke uh, for a starting job next season. He said the two have had, quote, long talks uh, the last few days. Mock was 17-5 and as a starter with six touchdown passes and four interceptions in four games in 2015 before being suspended for the year. Um, Nick Saban, is he going to leave? No, he's not going to leave. He's, he's already won three national championships at Oklahoma and is seeking a, possibly another one in this year's college football playoff. And he's been accustomed to the chatter that maybe he needs to go somewhere else, get a new coaching challenge. Maybe he's done everything he could possibly do at Alabama. Maybe it's time for him to go somewhere, like the rumors to Texas and whatnot. But he reiterated this week and said he doesn't see himself coaching anywhere. And quote, no, I really don't. I don't see it ever happening. I know everybody's uh, every year somebody has me going somewhere else. I think a lot of it isn't just the coaching part. What people don't understand is they forget you're a person. They forget you have a wife and two kids and a grandbaby, and they all live in Birmingham. They all work here. My wife goes to Birmingham five uh, times a week. My mom lives in Birmingham now after moving from Myrtle Beach. Not just the job. A lot of people don't get that. My life is here. So some strong quotes. And, and I finally like this, that he's, he's came out. He gave a, a legit statement about it to let everybody know, look, 
I got family here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here until I feel that it's time to retire or whatever. Uh, he's not going to do an Urban Meyer thing where ah, I just need a break for a year. I need a break. And then go back to coaching for another four years and leave. Uh, Alabama takes on Michigan State again on the New Year's Eve in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Saban has either won a national title or coached Crimson, the Crimson Tide to the college football playoff five of the past seven years, which is absolutely crazy. Um, and just think, it's next week. It is next week when we get all that good stuff. Next Thursday is when everything happens. And I th- I'm going to be at work. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm bringing my phone. and I'm, Well, I always bring my phone, but I'm going to make it sure I'm watching this game somehow or I'm listening to this game somehow, some way, because uh, it is very important. College football playoff. We'll talk about it. Oh, man, we're going to have to talk about it on Monday's show. So much to do. So little time. But anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and preview some of the bowl games that we have. That's it for college football news. Saturday, tomorrow, we have, or depending on when you're listening to this, uh, we have Connecticut going against Marshall at 10 a.m. Central Time on ESPN. Uh, the St. Petersburg Bowl, Marshall's favored by five points. And while I like the Huskies, they you know they beat Houston earlier this year to get bowl eligible. I like it and all, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go for Marshall here. I think they they're gonna have enough offense to get it going and uh, hold it down. So I'm going with Marshall. Uh, at one o'clock on CBS, you have the Sun Bowl with Miami going against Washington State. A very interesting matchup. Uh, Washington State is actually favored two and a half points. It's supposed to possibly be rainy and 49 degrees in El Paso for this game. So how that's going to affect Washington State throwing the ball, you know, 50 times. Miami uh, trying to find some type of identity running the ball. Joseph Yearby close to 1,000 yards with uh, 939. Could get it done here. Washington State, you know, it's not like they have the best defense. Probably going to be a shootout. Depending on the weather, I'm going to take Miami. I'm going to take the U. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go with Miami. I feel a little bit more hyped for them. I'm going to take the U. Uh, at 1.20 Central Time, we have Washington going against Southern Mississippi in the heart of Dallas Bowl in the real Cotton Bowl Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Washington is an eight and a half point favorite. And while Nick Mullins and Southern Miss can throw the ball a ton, with he, him having 4,100 yards, 36 touchdowns. Washington's DBs, they know how to play. They know how to get it done. I'm going to go with the Huskies here. I'm rooting for them all the way. I hope they get it done. And while eight and a half point favorites to Washington is a little bit too much, I'm still going to take the Huskies on this one as they get the job done. 2.30 Central Time on ABC. It's the new era pinstripe bowl between Indiana and Duke in New York. <sighs> Yankee Stadium. They don't even have the weather on here. Why? I was kind of wanting to know. Uh, doesn't matter. It's not going to be the, the greatest game. I'm taking Indiana because of Jordan Howard, mainly. 1,200-yard rusher, uh, nine touchdowns. Nate Sudfield, 3,100 yards, close to 32 uh, 24 touchdowns. I, f- I feel like they can get enough done. Duke has been so inconsistent this year. Um, Indiana's favorite two and a half points. Going to take Indiana. Uh, at 445 Central Time, we have Tulsa and Virginia Tech for the Independence Bowl. Virginia Tech, a 14-point favorite over the Golden Hurricanes. Uh, while I'm not going to take the points on that, I'm going to take the, uh, I was going to say the Huskies, the Hokies. For this one, it's Frank Beamer's last game as a head coach for Virginia Tech. This is the last one. You know Virginia Tech is going to want to get this for him. They weren't able to get the the last uh, home win for him. So you know they're going to want to get this one. It's his last game overall coaching. It's in Shreveport, uh, Louisiana, which is not the greatest, but they want to get it done. I'm going Virginia Tech here. I don't know about the points. I think Tulsa going to have enough offense to keep it going defensively that kind of sucks so i understand uh but i'm gonna take virginia tech here for the w and at 8 15 central time you have on espn you have ucla taking on nebraska in the foster farms bowl i feel like this is going to be a very interesting matchup between josh rosen and the nebraska defense who finished you know they finished five and seven this year and a couple good grades from last year's squad brings them to a bowl game at five and seven Paul Perkins, Jordan Payton, all on UCLA getting it done. I'm going with the Bruins. 
They're six and a half point favorite. I'm probably going to take it. Taking the Bruins. Monday, uh, December 28th, you have at 1.30 Central Time. It's Pittsburgh and Navy on ESPN in Maryland <laughs> at all places. Uh, it's going to be right there. The Military Bowl. I'm going to take Navy. Uh, I want to take Pittsburgh. I don't know. This honestly is going to be a really good game. Uh, it, it really is. You're going to have the Pittsburgh defense with the head coach that I can't name right now. I slipped off the top of my mind. And then you have Keenan Reynolds, his last co- uh, collegiate game. It's going to be a fun one to watch. Tyler Boyd going out. It's supposed to be 46 degrees and rainy in Maryland. Navy is a fi- uh, excuse me three-point favorite. I'm going to take Navy. I'm going to root for them all the way. I'm taking Navy for this one. At 4 p.m. Central Time on Monday, you have Central Michigan and Minnesota. And I just realized, I was thinking we did our shows on Tuesdays. We do our show on Monday, so I'm already doing Monday's preview. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Central Michigan against Minnesota. Quick lane bull. 4 o'clock Central Time on ESPN2. Ford Field in uh, Detroit, Michigan. Michigan, or excuse me, Minnesota is a five-point favorite. I'm taking the uh, Golden Gophers here. I'm going to go with them, even though they're also a 5-7 team. Uh, they gave TCU a good matchup first week, which shows you the difference between a week one team and a week whatever team. Because uh, Minnesota ain't the same team. I'm taking Minnesota, though. I'm going to go with them. Probably a wrong pick. All right, moving on to the NFL where we have, if I can find it, Oakland Raiders safety Charles Woodson led the Coliseum crowd in a chant. Following a 23-20 overtime victory over the San Diego Chargers on Thursday night, he said, quote, let me hear it one time. Raiders. Raiders. Okay, no, I'm a Chargers fan. I can't can't be cheering that much. I like Charles Woodson, but eh, calm down now. Uh, Anyways, Woodson, who was playing his final home game, addressed Raiders fans and thanked them for their loyalty over his 18-year NFL career. He played his first eight seasons with the Raiders before going to the Green Bay Packers for seven seasons. Uh, he came back to the Raiders in, uh, excuse me, before the 2013 season and has played since. Here's what he had to say. Charles, take me through the entire day from beginning to end and what the highlights and lowlights were for you. Yeah, man, it was, it was you know, you wake up, you know, this, this morning, man, and, uh, you know, it just hits you that this is, this is going to be a good-ass time, you know, in the Coliseum. You know, you think about it, you know, the whole time driving in. Uh, you know, then you get to the stadium. And you sit at your locker, read a little bit of the press guide, you know, try to go through your normal operation, you know. But uh, it starts to build up because everybody's asking you a question, a question about how you feel, a lot of cameras around and that sort of thing. It felt like a reality television show. Uh, but then you get ready to come out, man. You come out for warm-ups. People are out here and, uh, you know, screaming your name, holding up signs and the whole thing, man. You just knew it was going to be a special night. And, uh, then you get to come out, for, you know, in the smoke for the last time. Hear your name, man, and the crowd went crazy, man. <laughs> then the game just ended up being a great game. You know, we going to overtime, man, and that, that overtime was, I think we took like 10 minutes off the clock or something crazy before we finally got on and, get, and got a field goal. But it was, it, was, it was a great night, man. It was, it was great to come out on top and get the win, man. A lot, a lot of fun out here playing with these guys. What is it like to be cheered, to have fans scream your name one more year, knowing that this is the end for you? What does Raider Nation represent to you, Charles? Man, honestly, the way it feels, man, I wish that every man, woman, and child could feel the way I feel tonight. You know, because of the support of the fans that, that they have for this team, that they have for me personally, the electricity that was in here tonight, man, a lot of it being for me. Um, and I think just appreciating the way that I play the game uh, means a lot to me, man. It was very, 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 very special night. So some touching stuff from uh, Charles Woodson and the Oakland uh, for telling the Oakland Raiders fans. And, um, you know, Charles Woodson, I liked him. Uh, I've always liked Charles Woodson from Michigan all the way on. Um, I have his full highlights and his interview uh, in, on my YouTube channel. Go check it out, The Short Sports Show. Link is down in the description below. Go check it out. It's all there for you guys to watch. His final highlights of his home game in Oakland. Uh, great game. Um, and honestly, again, as a Chargers fan, I wanted us to lose. I don't know why we can't. We couldn't lose to the Jaguars properly. We couldn't lose to the Dolphins properly. I'm trying to get the number one overall pick, which is not going to happen unless 
Tennessee and uh, Cleveland went out, which I don't see happening. Um, but I just wanted us to get the number one pick so we can get someone good or trade and get multiple picks. It doesn't matter. I, we need a whole lot of help. I've said it many, many times. Chargers, just lose, okay? We got one more game against Denver on the road. Just lose. That's it. Easy. Done. Uh, the Chicago Bears running back Matt Forte said Wednesday he is pessimistic about his chances of re-signing with Chicago when his contract expires after the season. Forte has played eight seasons in a Bears uniform since the franchise took him in the second round of the 2008 NFL Draft. He said, quote, I mean, I want to return, but if you're saying I am hopeful that I do return, there's not much to hope for right now because, like I said, I talked to the Bears front office earlier and they haven't said anything back, so there's really nothing to hope for. Let me tell you something, Matt Forte. It is Christmas. There's always something to hope for. Uh, Matt Forte, who is 30 and is in his final season of a four-year, $30.4 million contract he signed back in the summer of 2012. Forte earned a base salary of $7, uh, $7 million this year, plus per-game roster bonuses that could total up to a $1 million. Uh, Forte said he approached the Bears last winter about extending his contract and part of lowering his salary cap number, which is nine point two for twenty uh, nine point two million for twenty fifteen. And uh, you know they said nothing. They said nothing back. Forte has every intention of playing next year, even though he's already thirty years old as a running back. He currently leads the team with seven hundred and sixty eight rushing yards on under ninety attempts. Uh, and he also has been splitting carries with Jeremy Langford, the rookie out of Michigan State, who's been excellent, or he's been, you know, really good. Uh, and uh, Forte has 38 receptions and 332 yards receiving. Forte leads all NFL backs with 1,200 yards from scrimmage since 2007. He is the second most productive running back in Bears history behind only Hall of Famer Walter Payton. He said, quote, like I said, I am hopeful that something will happen. Um, there's nothing really to hope for because I haven't been approached or anything, but I do want, do I want to come back? Yes, that would be ideal for me, but that doesn't always happen in this business. Ouch. We'll have to see how that plays out with him and the Chicago bears, but you got to think about it. Unless he comes back really for a veteran minimum they're I'm sure they're ready to go with Kadeem Carey, their speedster and the third down back and Jeremy Langford for the rest of, you know, for the next few, for the future, basically, um, if he's gonna want more than you know, like three million a year, then which I'm assuming he would, I think he's done with the Bears. Carolina Panthers cornerback Josh Norman referred to wide receiver Roddy White on Wednesday as Atlanta's fifth receiver. Now he just got over the 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 smack talk and the fighting and playing Odell Beckham. Now, he's already come out and talked about Roddy White. Now, granted, his comments come two days after White had said Norman wasn't a tough guy and that Norman's success had a lot to do with Carolina's scheme more than him being a shutdown corner. Sounds a lot like a few years ago with Michael Crabtree of the four, when he was with the 49ers and Seattle Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman. This is what Norman said on the Falcons. Quote, I know Julio Jones is leading right now receivers-wise. Roddy, I think, is their fifth receiver coming in behind the tight end and running backs. I think he has one reception for a touchdown this year, so we're going to try to hold him out as much as we can. End quote. White is actually fourth for Atlanta in 2015 with 37 receptions and 429 yards. He was right about the touchdown, though. Uh, White isn't the only player to take a shot at Norman, who was named to his first Pro Bowl on Tuesday. Houston wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins wrote on Twitter last week that Norman was the best cover three corner, LOL, which he later deleted. Uh, Norman said he must be doing something, quote, very, very well if people are criticizing him. Quote, this, there is a saying, if you don't have haters, then you're not popping. You're not popping, guys. Uh, it's pretty cool. At the same time, Knowing that guys that we face have a little bit of an uh, animosity towards us, it's cool. I would too. Like I said before, man, if those guys continue to have issues and problems with me and my coverages and the way I play, I must be doing it well to be uh, to the point where I'm hearing all this backlash. End quote. So, at least he didn't start the beef against Hopkins and Roddy White. 
you know, he didn't say anything. They came after him first. Doesn't I'm not, you know, making an excuse for him to say anything. I really think he probably could have should have, you know, shut his mouth the entire week and just not re- said anything. I understand that's not the type of player he is, but it would have looked a lot better publicly wise because he's getting a lot of hate towards um, because of what happened with Odell. If you go on my YouTube channel, I have the the highlights of you know Odell and Josh Norman. Over a hundred and fifty thousand people have watched it, which is absolutely incredible. Um, I should have plugged my show while making that video. I didn't know it was going to get uh, that many. If I would have done that, I would have plugged my show in and kabam, <laughs> uh, viewers. No, but anyways, uh, you know, he's if you read the comments, which you know a lot of them are, you know, YouTube comments. You've been there, anyways. But a lot of them are attacking Josh, or you know, they're attacking Odell. So this would have been the perfect time for him not to say a thing because now no matter what happens in the game, there's going to be some type of backlash like he's talked about. He should have just played and maybe said something after the game. If he shuts down Roddy White or he shuts down Julio Jones or whatever, and Panthers come with the victory, then probably you know make a little remark back at them, but not now, not before. And speaking of Odell, New York Giants head coach Tom Coughlin said he hopes Odell Beckham Jr.'s suspension serves as a learning experience for his young star wideout. Quote, I think the whole experience is going to have an incredible impression on him. He's going to learn that there's no place for that kind of activity on the field. As I've said many times before, it's a tough lesson, but a learn. Beckham was suspended for uh, one game for his aggressive and violent actions in Sunday's loss against the Panthers. He did appeal, but was uh, did lose it on Wednesday. So he has to sit out uh, Sunday's game in Minnesota and can't have any contact with the team until Monday. Uh, Beckham issued two separate written apologies following the announcement Wednesday that his appeal had been denied. Uh, This will be the first game he has missed since he sat out the first four games of his rookie season in 2014 with a uh, hamstring injury. Beckham ranks third in the NFL this year with uh, 1,300 yards receiving, as well as tied with the league lead of 13 touchdown catches. Uh, Atlanta Falcons running back, uh, running back, excuse me, rookie running back, Tevin Coleman slipped in the shower at the team facility Wednesday and is going through concussion protocol. Now, this is a terrible uh, thing, and it's probably one of the scariest things you could process, uh, go through. I've never slipped in the shower. I've almost slipped. I think we've all had that. Uh, but the quote that Dan Quinn gives, uh, I can't say it without smiling and laughing. I don't mean this in any disrespect, but this is what he said. Quote, he fell and hit his head. He's in concussion protocol. That's unfortunate. I don't know. It's, okay, now it's not that funny anymore. But the first time it was pretty funny. Uh, Cohen's availability for this week's game against undefeated Carolina is unclear. And if he's unable to go, undrafted rookie Taron Ward would serve as Devontae Freeman's backup. Coleman has 392 rushing yards on 87 carries with one touchdown this season. Uh, One quick topic, and this will be the last thing before we get into picking the games and wrapping up the show. Hint, wrapping the show because Christmas, even though you're unwrapped. uh, Is the early look at at the uh, the quarterback market. Uh, Teams expected to be in the quarterback market include, you know, the the Jets. No, not the – well, maybe because, yeah, the Jets – Browns, Texans, Cowboys, uh, possibly the Eagles, Washington, San Francisco. Um, I think St. Louis is good with Case Keenum. At least that's my opinion. Uh, I think Case Keenum can get it done. But anyways, here are just a couple names throughout. Uh, San Francisco's Colin Kaepernick. Now, he had a great start. Three playoff runs. Or three playoff road wins, most in franchise history, more than both Joe Montana and Steve Young, but he couldn't get it done this season. Just played terribly. Now San Francisco has not closed the door on bringing him back, but they kind of just said, you know, you're at the door and it's slightly closed. It's it's just there's a little creak, so you can you know we can talk, but that's about it. But you know we're all expecting them to part ways, whether it's through a trade or being cut, whatever it is. And, um, you know, people are thinking maybe Colin Kaepernick goes to Philadelphia, runs that offense. You know, will Sam Bradford be there? Because Sam Bradford, don't forget, he's he's a pending free agent. If, if Bradford joins another team next season, he would become the first 
number one overall pick at quarterback to ever play for three teams in his first seven seasons, which is not a good record to have. Uh, but, you know, what money is he going to demand? What money is he going to want? He didn't want to get a contract extension before this year, which maybe means he didn't really want to play in Philadelphia overall. He's just playing now maybe for a new contract somewhere. So could Colin Kaepernick go to Philadelphia and maybe Bradford goes to San Francisco in a trade in the draft? Who knows? That could be something. Uh, Denver's Peyton Manning. Denver's not expected to bring his contract back. You know, they got Brock Osweiler. I think they're ready for him for the future. And uh, also all the cap money that Peyton would bring for next year is just ridiculous. The real question is where is whether Manning will want to continue playing or just say, you know, just hang him up. I think the, if he does want to play, honestly, I think the only team that's going to give him a shot is Cleveland. And I, I think we can all agree with that. I don't think there's anyone else that's going to want him. Um, you know, you could think about San Francisco, but, man, you are really stretching it with Peyton Manning. I mean, think of what he did this year. I think he still has the league lead in interceptions this year, and he's only played just a few games. He's missed, what, the past three or four games? And he still has the league lead in interceptions. He really want to take a chance with the lesser team. I mean, he's got a great defense. He's got some great wide receivers. Running game's okay. Offensive line is okay. But, he, you know, uh, I don't know. Then you obviously have Johnny Football. Johnny Manziel. Cleveland has to figure out who's going to make it. Uh, is there going to be a new GM? <laughs> is there going to be a new head coach? You know, once that's finalized, then we can figure out exactly what Manziel's going to do. Obviously, he's been a hot name for the Dallas Cowboys. Whether that actually happens or not, who knows? Um, obviously, I would love to see Johnny Football in Dallas or in Houston. That'd be great. Honestly, my my favorite thing would be Johnny the Houston, and which is probably really bad for his you know off the field stuff, and then have Robert Griffin go to Dallas which I know is going to be kind of weird for the NFC East thing, but we've seen it before. I mean, look at McNabb. He went to the Eagles, to the Redskins, and vice, you know, all these other stuff. Anyways, um, if RG3 could go to Dallas, you know, it's closer to Waco, and then you have Johnny Football going to Houston, closer to College Station, bam, I think that'd be fun to watch. Um, will that ever happen? Probably not. Probably not. But, you know, it's Christmas. We can hope, right? Unless you're Matt Forte. Anyways, uh, also Washington, they have a little bit of an issue because Kirk Cousins, he's a, scheduled to be a free agent after this season. He's had a great year. He leads the league in completion percentage with 70%. Might win the NFC East. Might make the playoffs, host the playoff game. They could always use a franchise tag on him, so that holds him for another year, but it increases the cap money, which I don't know their cap space right now, but you know if they're willing to do that, then they have that for one more year. If not... Kirk Cousins could be like, you know what? Maybe I want to go to San Francisco and get paid a, a, a huge deal. Who knows? Uh, so Washington has that, plus the money deal with uh, RG3. What he's going to be owed, it's going to be ridiculous being a backup quarterback. He hasn't seen the field all year. They actually got a hope for I did. A, uh, I'm in sports management class. I'm taking a sports agency class as well. And I did a, a thing on RG3 about him leaving, right? had no idea that unless he gets hurt next uh, between now and next year, I th I'm pretty sure I would have to bring it up. I should have brought it up. Washington would own like $16 million unless RG3 gets hurt. So if I'm Washington, I say, RG3, you know what? This is what we're going to do. We're going to put you at wide receiver or at running back, and we're just going to play you because Washington really has to hope, which is just a terrible thing, but they got to hope he gets hurt. So that way they don't have to pay him. Then they can cut him, no cost or very little cost, not even close to $16 million, and they'd be okay. Because if he doesn't, and he's fine, and it comes 2016 season, they owe, him, they owe him a ton of money to be a backup. And then the most interesting one that I saw was New Orleans quarterback Drew Brees. His $30 million salary cap number for next season is scheduled to be the highest in NFL history. And it's not expected to stand. It's not. <laughs> I don't think anybody thinks he's going to get that much for next year. The question is whether the two sides with New Orleans and Drew Brees restructure it or if Drew Brees says, you pay me or I'm gone. That is going to be interesting as well to see what happens with Drew Brees. 
Could he go to Houston, come back to Texas? Who knows? Who knows these things? But uh, like I said, it's going to be very interesting. Let me know in the comment section below where you believe any of these quarterbacks will end up or where you want them to end up. Also, follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24-7 and let me know there as well using the hashtag the short sports show. Um, we don't really do the playoff picture because that's on Monday's show. To, uh, on the NBA, uh, I guess we can talk about that really quickly. You got New Orleans and Miami going at, going at it at 11 a.m. here pretty soon. Chicago and OKC going at it. Cleveland and Golden State. Golden State 27-1. and By the time you're hearing this, you most likely already know who won. Uh, I'm taking Golden State here. I hope Golden State wins. It's in Golden State. <laughs> uh, it'd be a huge thing for Oakland. I mean, talk about the Raiders game last night, and then you have this game. For any of those lucky fans that had tickets for Charles Woodson's last game, last night and then you have this game today hats off to you <laughs> hats off to you uh, and then you have san antonio and houston i'm going obviously for san antonio and then the clippers against the lakers i can only pray for a christmas miracle that the lakers can win what more than like 20 games this season that'd be probably a miracle um i'm gonna rock with it though i'm gonna rock with it like I said, last night was the Chargers and the Raiders. Chargers dropped to 4-11. and 11. Raiders go into 7-8 and eight in hopes for an 8-8 eight and eight season next week um, and have a winning season for them. Phillip Rivers led uh, the passing with 31-49, 30, 277 yards and a touchdown. But the Raiders do get the victory in overtime, 20-23. to 23. Washington takes on Philadelphia on Saturday night. What the heck? We have another one? Wow, I did not know that. Uh, we have another Saturday night game. Awesome. I thought we only had one. Washington and Philadelphia, all the marbles are in this one, guys. Washington is 7-7. Seven and seven. Eagles are 6-8. and eight. Eagles need to win this game to hope to keep some uh, playoff alive because the Giants are also 6-8. and eight. So the winner of this, if Washington wins, then it's basically Washington all, all the way, I would believe. Unless then it, it, it'd be Washington or uh, New York to win it. Philadelphia has to win this game to keep the playoff hopes alive. They are actually a three-point favorite tonight. I am taking Washington. I know Washington is 1-5 and five on the road, not the best, but Kirk Cousins, no, he's got money to play for, and it'd be huge for him to get the uh, the playoff. So I'm taking Phil, or excuse me, Washington for this one over Philadelphia. On Sunday, we have the Patriots and the Jets. I hope the Jets win it, but I'm taking the Patriots here because it's the stupid Patriots. Texans and the Titans. I'm going for the Titans, but the Texans are most likely going to win it. So we're taking the Texans. Uh, Titans have uh, Zach Medenberger starting as Marcus Mariota is now out for the year with the MCL sprain. Uh, Cleveland Browns taking on the <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs. God, it does not help Johnny football. He has to play against Seattle last week on the road, and now he has to go on the road to play Kansas City in one of the best defenses this year right now in the second half of the year. Kansas City has won eight straight games. They started the season off one and five. They are now nine and five. It's just absolutely incredible. This game is supposed to be 36 degrees and rainy or possible snow. I don't know. Uh, Kansas City's favored 12 points. 12 freaking points to Kansas City. I'm taking Kansas City. Not on the spread, but I'm taking Kansas. Well, actually, who knows? Uh, I don't I do not do spread no more. I hate spread. Going with Kansas City to win this. Hopefully, Johnny Football can get a W, though. Colts and the Dolphins... Both teams, uh, I guess the Colts are still fighting for playoffs. They have to win out. Uh, I'm taking I'm taking the Colts here. Dolphins just look, gar- look like gar- Miami is actually a two-and-a-half-point favorite, actually, in this game. Wow. How? They just got blown out by San Diego, who's one of the worst teams in the league right now. I don't understand. Uh, I would definitely take the Colts <laughs> and the points. Or I guess it doesn't matter. Just take the Colts. Uh, 49ers and the Lions going at it, taking the Lions for this. The Lions are 10.5 point favor, taking the Lions. The Dallas Cowboys taking on the Buffalo Bills, taking the Buffalo Bills here. Uh, whole, the whole East is going to be rainy. It's incredible. Uh, Panthers and the Falcons taking the Panthers here, unless they sit out, which that's a question. That's actually something we'll talk about Monday, I guess. Uh, I meant to plan it for this show, but we're already running out of time. So, um, Gonna take the Panthers here, unless they sit everybody else in. I guess the Falcons, uh, Bears and the Buccaneers going with the Bucks, Steelers and the Ravens going with the Steelers, Jacksonville Jaguars and the New Orleans Saints taking the Saints. 
Rams and the Seahawks going with the Seahawks. Uh, Packers and Cardinals, what a great game that is going to be. How is that not Sunday night? Why? See, I swear, the past primetime games are ridiculous. I don't know what the NFL is thinking. So for Sunday night, we have the Giants and the Vikings. Vikings have everybody on their defense on on the IR. And then you have the Giants who are just on life support right now. Or we could watch the Green Bay Packers and the Arizona Cardinals go at it, which could be a possible NFC Championship preview. I'm just saying, why not have that game? Because you know NBC isn't going to get the NFC Championship game, so why wouldn't you want to switch? I This <sighs> makes you scratch your head. i um, going to go with the Packers. I, no, I'm, I'm taking the Cardinals against the Packers. And then the Giants-Vikings game, going to take the Giants here just because the Vikings are missing everybody. And then Monday night, we actually have a good game for once. We have the Bengals and the Broncos. A.J. McCarron's actually looking pretty well. A.J. Green over 1,200 yards receiving. I'm taking the Bengals on the road. They need a statement win. This will get them. I'm pretty sure they would clinch the second seed with this. So I'm taking the Bengals here for uh, that game. So that about wraps it up for tonight or for today's show, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and enjoy oh i'll see you before new year's we'll have a show monday morning again on speaker.com iHeartRadio, itunes stitcher radio youtube wherever you're listening thank you so very much again ha- hopefully everybody had a great christmas break and i will see you guys next monday as we recap some of these games and any news that happens both in college football and the nfl thank you so much for joining us again follow me on twitter at short underscore sports 24 7 and as always god first god bless i'm out peace I'ma do this here forever. Hold up. <laughs> Refuse to lose, I do my dues. Forever mean I am future proof. No palm readings, no tarot cards, no prophecies, and no voodoo use. My, my, my records rang like Napoleon. The school away from the principal to the student body to the custodian. <laughs> Front page, I do mine. In due time, get that full ride and make the next level my new high. Any endeavor, show me the best and I'm better. So never say never. I'm gonna do this forever. 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 Forever.